The secret to my show was that I never went into the gutter in order to entertain. I did not go into material which was going to be embarrassing to the volunteers. If they think enough of me to trust me, to step on stage, to allow themselves to be hypnotized, or as I called it later, the su placed in the superconscious state, which I think was a far more accurate description of uh, the actual proceedings, uh, that I owe it to them not to in any way embarrass them or to ask them to, to base themselves. And uh, because of this, the career was a very long career. We were playing to four generations of the same family over the years. You know, the, the parents would come along, get married, have the kids, the kids would come along, and the kids would have kids. And in some cases, even the great-grandparents would uh, be there and the great-grandchildren. So when you uh, present a show, which is funny because human nature is funny, without making fools of the people, allowing the people to suddenly realize that they are quite talented. You bring forward talents they've never realized before. And make sure that the applause is given to the volunteers. You don't go forward every minute, ta-ra, aren't I great? And this is, that's, uh, you don't do that at all. You will say, you were absolutely brilliant tonight, as your friends are going to tell you. Thank you very much for coming up. You've got a big hand. And of course, the final funny part of the show, they've been given a suggestion when they get to a certain point in the audience, and another, uh, another happening is going to be there. And that's very, very funny and very, very good. And of course, when you say like that, and they're out of it, and they go back to the seat, they, have n they do not have a clue why they did it or what happened at that point. And that makes it funny for the people around them. Around them. And uh, when the people come back and bring them back, uh, bring that volunteer back, to try and prove to he or, uh, he, or he or she that, uh, you know, that uh, they were, how brilliant they were. There's another member of the group may come up and they all have the experience and so it grows over the years. And that comes from trust, knowing that you're not going to debase them and you're going to, uh, they're going to feel very, very good about it. They're going to realize they've entertained an audience in a manner they've known, never known before. And the audience must judge you before they're going to decide to step on stage and trust you to, uh, to allow them to, to uh, allow you to hypnotize them because they must come up feeling that they're not going to be violated. They must trust me by that point. That's why I probably drew more people the stage than any hypnotist has before or perhaps since. 15 and a half million Canadians with the hypnotic show, which is a record. That's, uh, now many of those people were repeaters, but that's how many tickets we sold and uh, coast to coast. And I think for one reason, the show was a clean show. I never wanted to make fools of the people. The show was really showing the creative side of people. You can take people who have never been on stage before in their life, suddenly turn them into brilliant entertainers. They walk out, they're believing that they have talent, feeling they have talent, doing a marvelous presentation to the audience. Uh, they really trusted me. They came up on the stage. They knew that I wasn't going to be make fools of them, that I was in fact going to treat them with dignity and may be help them bring forward talents they've never known before. And uh, that, I think that's very interesting for a person who hasn't achieved anything much in life. They may be in a job that's very dull to them. Suddenly the, or the creativity comes forward. At the end I always gave the applause to the people who had volunteered. I'd say your friends are going to tell you how brilliant you were tonight on my stage. And when you have when you find this out, I hope you try to develop your talent because you have great talent. Is that right, folks? And of course, when 2,000 people give them a, a burst of applause and they don't know why they're getting it because they cannot recall what happened during the two and a half hours they're on the stage. And uh, the show just kept building. The audiences, uh, you know, we're playing to the fourth generation when I go out and do shows now of the same families. And that is, uh, says something in itself. And you couldn't, if you're do, going to do a sleazy or a dirty show just for the sake of, sake of a cheap laugh. You cannot hold an audience for that. Uh, you cannot have the audiences stay with you year after year and generation after generation. The audiences give you a tremendous lift. Uh, I have a great rapport with my audiences and uh, I've always respected them and tried to give them 100% up there every night. And uh, sure you miss it. And the applause is a very heady thing. It's a you know, show business is the only, it's the only business in the world where you instantly get grat gratification and thanks for the work you've done. I mean, you could, uh, a man could be working in a bank, bring in a whole new, uh, a whole new client 
the manager may give him a pat on the back and a small bonus, but the whole bank doesn't stand up and applaud. But when you do the right job uh, for the audience, they're on their feet and they yell and they shout and they carry on. And uh, that is the great part about it. And walking down the street and be recognized by people, or walking to a shopping mall and hear kids starting to sing, coming on the man they call Ravine, you know, that spot we had made for us by Jerry Gon did that, uh, who was a Canadian who, but he did that when he moved down to uh, Seattle and he was with King Radio there. He had, ran this tremendous commercial for me, which took me all over the world. And uh, so that's part of it, meeting people and having people come up and say, we, we sure like your show, we've seen it so many times, or they say we went to your show for the first time, that's a really clean show, you can take the family, I'm going to take the family back to see it. And things of this uh, type, uh, that, that's hard to give up and walk away from totally, isn't it? Uh, you know, one of the greatest, <laughs> when we had the girl that cannot hang out on the show, we're on the Ipswich showgrounds. And the best piece of advice that was ever given to me by a showman anywhere was given by one of the old Carney showmen around there. So we're in Ipswich, Queensland, and so you see the banner. It has the center showed the, the, the gallows. On the side it said, Robin, Miss Robin Ravines, the, the greatest capologist that has to escape within this time. And it said, Peter Ravine, uh, star of magic, was on the other one. That's what it said. <laughs> and, we, and it was done by uh, this great, uh, uh, these, they used to paint beautiful banners for the sideshows in those days. And it was an art form in Australia when you had all of the many sideshows out there. So, so this old showman said, he's got a cigar and he said, star of magic, eh kid? Star of magic. He said, if you want to make it in this world, remember this, that star is rat spelt backwards. <laughs> and do you know that, that stuck in my mind? And of course I told this to Coral later on when I met her. And any time I started to be it's time to come on too strong. You should say, rats, rats. <laughs> Isn't that a great thing to be yeah. told at a young age? Star is rat spelt backwards. I've never forgotten that. I think it's great. And I never um, come across larger than life. I always try to just be quite natural on stage. And it's um, just a very simple story. Give the people a clean show that everybody can enjoy. Give them their money's worth every night. Never walk through a show. Give 100% of yourself. And they reward you by coming back. And it was just one of the longest careers in the business, I guess.